Hi, everybody. This is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and these are your sun and rising sign horoscopes for the month of October 2019. So I'm grouping them together this month according to element. So these are going to be the sun and rising sign horoscopes for Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. So we'll go through them one at a time, and we'll start with Cancer. I'm going to go ahead and put the chart up on the screen. Now, um, this month for everybody, transits are taking a uh, taking place across the uh, Libra and Capricorn axis, as well as the Scorpio and Taurus axis. So let me show you what's going on. So for example, all month long, right after a new moon on September 28th, we have a series of planets moving through Libra and making squares to Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn. That constellates um, over and over again throughout the month from start to finish. Now the other major uh, sign, uh, Scorpio, planets passing into Scorpio and opposing Uranus in the sign of Taurus. So that's also happening all month long. Let me give you the dates. So you have some things to think about. Remember again, right around the uh, 28th of September, we had, or we have a new moon. I'm making these at the end of September right now. New moon in Libra. And then the Mars enters Libra on October 3rd. The sun squares Saturn in Capricorn on October 7th, right about the mid-month, say the 12th through the 15th, the sun is going to square Pluto and Capricorn. And at the very end of the month, like the last week of the month, uh, Mars is going to also be squaring Saturn. So big amount of energy moving through Libra Capricorn. We're going to talk about that for all three water signs. The other thing we're going to be looking at is uh, Mercury entering the sign of Scorpio right around the beginning of the month, opposing Uranus in Taurus, followed by Venus around mid-month, opposing Uranus and Taurus, and then late month, the Sun finally opposing Uranus and Taurus at the same time as a new moon in Scorpio, which will also oppose Uranus and Taurus. So that is the lineup. Um, now that looks like a lot, right? A lot of transits. The simplest way to understand so many transits happening is to look for the most common basic themes. That's always going to show up in monthly sun sign horoscopes, even if you're tracking your transits in your own birth chart. Uh, it's going to show up in terms of the houses and the topics of the houses that are being activated by the repetition of planets lighting up aspects in those two houses or two signs. So in the case of cancers this month, everything is focused around the topics of home, family, roots, land, property, parents, sometimes the father, and a square to Saturn and Pluto in the seventh house, which is the place of marriage, relationships. Uh, it's a place that features um, anything or anyone that we get very deeply absorbed in that is other than ourselves. So uh, simple things to look for this month would be the emphasis on interpersonal relationships within the family and big changes happening in those areas at once. Saturn and Pluto lends a heavier, more serious uh, and mature, sobering kind of reality in the seventh house of relationships, also a house that deals with endings or resolution or the completion of something. So you might be ending something, completing something, something, some theme in your life, some or era in your life might be wrapping up, or there could be deeper, heavier, more committed, um, serious adult themes going on in your relationships right now, or within the, the the topic of marriage itself could be active, especially in the family. Like it wouldn't be uncommon to see divorces in the family around this time. Not have to be your divorce, but people you know, or just the theme of divorces in the air, or death, death in the family, death of older people in the family, especially grandparents, people who are ready to pass probably with Saturn. Um, but also just the back and forth between uh, endings and some more serious matters around family and uh, home or domestic life in general. I'm not going to live somewhere any longer. I'm moving. Or, um, you know, there's a certain fundamental way in which, um, you know, my family life is changing because my spouse is getting a new job or we're having to relocate because of a spouse's job or something like that. So any way in which the relationship area of your life can be tied into the family and home area this month, it's highlighted. There's a lot of beauty in the sign of Libra in the fourth house right now, a lot of seriousness and potential, um, you know, kind of heavier, more necessary, faded, deeper events. Um, they don't have to be bad, but they are 
they're they're sobering and they're the kind of real heavy necessary things that you have to look at right now in that area now the other of course major area is the fifth house place of children a place of joy creativity fun good fortune um, recreation entertainment pregnancy children and uh, the 11th house Uranus placement, which has to do with groups, allies, communities, etc. Now, overall, both of these houses are pretty good. They were traditionally called the house of good fortune and the house of good spirit, um, the places of Venus and Jupiter, um, respectively, in ancient astrology. Um, so the opposition between them um, sometimes will indicate that good things are happening, joyful things are happening, but they're provocative or they're outside of the box or they're different or they require some courage or... You might be taking a step forward, for example, in a new creative direction, or you may be literally finding out that you got pregnant, or you may be dealing with something with your kids. Uranus adds the element of shock, the unexpected, the original, that which is revolutionary, that which emancipates or liberates us, but it comes sometimes through shocks, through upheavals, and in the case of so many oppositions in Scorpio, through a deeper emotional level of confrontation or uh, change. So, <clears throat> Both houses generally support the idea of things things coming into your life right now that should be supportive, joyful, fun, helpful. But because of the oppositions, because of the tension with Uranus, it, you know you can expect that the the things that happen right now are um, there might be a little bit of um, what do I want to say? Uh, the, the the unexpected events of Uranus may play a large role, and a deeper emotional intensity of Scorpio may play a role. Let me give you some practical examples because this one's a little, sometimes could be a little abstract. The fifth house, for example, might be, I like to drink and party and have a lot of fun. And Uranus in the 11th house says, I need a new social life and something has to change in terms of my goals and dreams about the future. So you find Alcoholics Anonymous. Simple example of an 11th house, 10th house, or 11th house, 5th house dynamic that's a little bit more difficult. Like there's some element of the way that you go about approaching joy or fun that's excessive or that you have to have, that there's some need for a different kind of experience to break you out of some kind of unhealthy relationship to pleasure or joy. On the other hand, you could be really repressed and not know how to seek out people or experiences that can help you loosen up and explore your creative side or even your sexual side more. These are different kinds of practical examples of how that might constellate. So, so that's what I've got for you this month. Let me know how things go. Oh, and the other thing with the fifth house energy is, you know, if you have kids, sometimes big changes around uh, kids or, and then again, 11th house groups or groups of social groups, things like that. Don't be surprised if you see some um, uh, changes among your friends or among your, with your children. Okay, so uh, let's go and let's take a look at Scorpio next. So Scorpio, uh, this month, of course, the Libra Capricorn energy is going to uh, manifest between the 12th and 3rd houses, and then the Scorpio Taurus axis is your 1st and 7th. So let's take a look at these areas. First of all, the 12th house, a place of self-undoing. 12th house is really the house where we lose the plot in some way, or we are self-destructive, or something happens that takes us out of control. This is also why it's a house associated with dissolution and surrender. So on some level, you may need to let go of something this month. Um, on another level, you're looking at patterns of health and patterns of disease in relationships. You got Venus in there to start the month. Venus's sign is featured. And um, so anything that may, that may cause you to look at friendships or relationships um, in a deeper way, that uh, maybe you're having to look at your own shadows or your own unconscious patterns of behavior and the way they help or harm your relationships. Or you might be having to uh, be very careful of themes like gossip or um, you know, just drama in relationships. The 12th house has this connotation of being things that undo us or people and situations that are sort of like hidden enemies, for example, is a phrase that's sometimes used. Just looking at your life in terms of um, patterns of health and patterns of harm in relationships, whether they're at work and there's work drama, or they're in friendships, or even, you know, family or siblings sometimes. At any rate, the third house dynamic, which uh, all of the planets in Libra, of course, are squaring Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn in the third house, has a lot to do with the mind. And so one of the things that you may be working through this month is just a heavier, more serious mental and emotional theme. This is echoed by the Scorpio Taurus transits we're going to talk about in a minute. And the need to 
communicate from a more serious, sober, objective place, that Saturn in the third house. All of the planets in Libra in the 12th may be looking again at issues around fairness, balance, and harmony in relationships. Square to Saturn in the third, you have to be really mature and you may have to make difficult kind of but kind of leveling with yourself, making difficult, adult, mature, realistic choices or evaluating situations as realistically as you can, looking at what commitments you have, what are necessary, what are unnecessary, and really communicating from that place of maturity and sobriety this month. That's going to help you work through the potential for there to be some heavier patterns in the 12th house around those Libra Venusian themes that we mentioned earlier with relationships. Now, the other major transit of the month for Scorpio is, of course, a bunch of planets moving into your home sign, opposing Uranus in Taurus in the seventh house. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, um, Uranus in Taurus in the seventh house is always going to present disruptions, uh, revolutions, and innovation in your partnerships or relationships. There's something that's trying, that's, you know, that when Uranus enters the seventh, it's like, it's time for greater themes of, you're, you're individuating, let's say, through your relationships through encounters that you have with others, whether they're sexual and more casual dating or they're, um, or they're heavier, deeper encounters that you have with other people. And they may not even have to be lovers either. Um, just deeper, life-changing, revolutionary encounters with others. You're in a seventh house trying to shake up your life through the encounters you have with significant others in your life. Meanwhile, the tension that's coming through in Scorpio is going to be about um, a focus on self and the need to be independent and the need to um, place more emphasis on your own needs, your own wants, your own desires, your own fears. So that whenever you see a big first house, seventh house dynamic, it's often the, the, the theme of the month, um, or in some cases, a few years, if you're having a long transit of some kind in your natal chart, will be about, um, am I the real and right me in the relationships that I'm in? Or does something need to change? Sometimes it's just that simple, but you're, you're doing it in the case of October all month long. Questions about emotional freedom, experimentation in relationships, the need to uh, redefine yourself, and maybe that's shifting the nature of real, your relationships. This goes along with the theme of just there being a heavier, uh, deeper look at patterns in relationships and the need to communicate and, and objectively evaluate things from a more sober, mature perspective. So Scorpios, that's what you're looking at this month. Let's go to Pisces and see what's coming for Pisces. So with Pisces this month, <clears throat> we're looking at that stellium in Libra going through the eighth house uh, and making the squares to Saturn and Pluto in the 11th house. So the eighth to 11th house theme, what does that involve? First of all, the eighth house is a place that has a lot to do with debts. Um, both, both the things that we owe other people and the things that other people owe us karmically, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, whatever. Um, so it's a house where we're often deeply entangled with other people's stuff, whether that's other people's money or other people's needs or our needs and how we're getting them met through other people. There's a large, a strong focus on that this month, as well as the topics in the eighth house, of course, of death, impermanence, karmic penalties, it's not an easy house. It's a house where we often feel in a more vulnerable position. And sometimes it's just a house that has to do with fear about the future or anxiety of death and change. Death usually not being literal, right? But this eighth house stellium, of course, squaring Saturn and, and Pluto in the 11th house. Hmm, interesting. It's as if these deeper eighth house themes that we're talking about, uh, the issue of dependency or codependency in relationships, the way that we're enmeshed or entangled with other people, with their money or finances, with their jobs, emotionally, um, where we feel like we need to take care of someone or someone's taking care of us. These are also going to come in contact with 11th house topics like your friends, your colleagues, um, groups that you belong to. For example, you might be looking very deeply this month at issues of codependency that you have with groups that aren't healthy, like a group of friends who's always bringing you down and yet you feel indebted or obligated to them in some way or you're enmeshed with them in an unhealthy manner. Um, you might have to look at that this month. Or you could be looking at trying to uh, make more mature, sober, objective decisions about who you should and should not be joined with, either at work or in love or 
in terms of what you want to be dependent upon or not. It could be something like choosing an insurance provider, or it could be something like whether or not to take a loan from a friend or a parent. But the point is what you do or don't want to be dependent upon socially, uh, emotionally, in terms of relationships with uh, larger groups of people or colleagues, your, even your ambitions for the future at work and who you are associating with or not associating with um, and thinking about the future of who you want to associate or not want to associate with creatively, professionally, what it will cost, what will be the cost emotionally, psychically? These are eighth house questions. Now, the other dynamic is going to be um, a string of planets moving into Scorpio and opposing Uranus in Taurus. So that moves between the ninth and third houses. And these are the houses of the mind. Um, what's on our mind in our everyday life and when we point our mind upward and ask about the higher truths of the universe. So there's also this theme of intellectual, spiritual, um, maybe even um, educational revolution this month. Uh, the, the, the Uranus in the third house, Uranus and Taurus in your third house, is really pushing you to uh, think differently, think outside of the box. If you're in the media or you do any kind of writing or teaching, this could be about new ways of thinking, new ways of teaching, new ways of learning. And it can be um, a suggestion that there's some kind of intellectual renaissance at play in your life right now. Um, maybe you're stepping out and trying to communicate yourself or some new skill or technology that you're interested in. Um, but also questions about beliefs and um, differing ideas or opinions about how to proceed in life or what are the guiding principles that govern the way that you kind of make your choices in a day-to-day -day way. There could be some really big changes, paradigm, structures of thought changing in a big way this month. So that's what you want to watch for with those transits, which again are start to finish all month long. Remember that new moon at the end of the month in Scorpio opposes Uranus in the third, really activating all of this for the entire uh, month of November as well. So all of my water sign people, that's what I've got for you. I hope that this was interesting and uh, I hope you'll leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me how your month is going. Tell me um, you know, how, uh, how those transits are hitting you as each one comes along. And uh, I look forward to uh, talking with you guys again next month. Take care. Bye.